I think for the longest time, I denied the label of being an artist or a writer. I wasn't ready to accept that that should be a part of my identity and that I should actually take my voice and my creativity seriously. I was born in Taiwan and I moved to Los Angeles when I was five years old. It was like really shocking. I still have very vivid memories of like being plucked out of Taiwan. All of a sudden I'm in America and my dad's like, your name is Jenny and uh, here's a cup of whole milk, drink it or you won't be American enough. You know, I was the youngest of three kids and the most uh, fluent in English the quickest. So ever since I was little, I was helping to translate bills and talk to adults on behalf of my family to help out. And so in a weird way, I think what was tough about transitioning to America was being the most Americanized little girl out of a family of five. I wrote a lot, I wrote poetry, I journaled, and I also used writing as a way to figure out how to think about the world. That was just my way of coping. I was like a little student government nerd, and so I really took that with me to college. My political consciousness and social consciousness really just blew wide open. And I got very politically active uh, with the students of color. Everyone's like, Jenny, oh my God. Who aren't you studying abroad? <laughs> Bitch, I am abroad. <laughs> I was born in Taiwan. I came to this country when I was five years old. I'm trying to figure this shit out every day. We still our pots and pans in the oven. We don't use a, the dishwasher. How does a Capri Sun work? When you're like a little immigrant girl from Taiwan, like America doesn't tell you you should be a stand-up comedian. As an Asian American woman, there's still this mentality that's very old school, I think, that there can only be certain slots allowed. When Margaret Cho finally showed up, I was like, whoa, this is a person that everyone says I'm really similar to. Maybe I should try stand-up comedy. What I love about today is that because of the internet and technology, there's so many more platforms and so many more tools for us to be self-starters and find our own audience directly. I've been self-employed as a comedian and a comedy producer and video creator. I get to travel the country doing stand-up comedy. I get to have interns who support me and I get to write. My four interns, it's really more for a mentorship sort of process. They come over to my place and we work on stuff together and you know, I check in with them about their process and their journey. The first episode is five, about okay. six minutes. So, so it'd yeah, be like one. That's one pilot. One, yeah. Oh, okay, see? <laughs> We're supposed to be good at math, we're Asian. I know. I think the moment that my mom stopped really nagging me about like making sure I had like a stable job was uh, when I got a, this random award from the Obama White House for like Asian Pacific American leader in art and storytelling. We got to go to the White House and I got to invite them. And after that, my parents were just like, you cool. <laughs> Comedy really saved my life. I was feeling like I didn't know what I should be doing in the world. And it wasn't until I started to do comedy that I realized, wow, this is actually a way for me to be more myself. Do you know what DTF means? Down to fornicate. For the Asians, it's not Din Tai Fung. Mitch from The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel is like really awesome because you can see what it's like to give up so much of her comfort and luxury in order to tell jokes on stage. Maybe today's not the best day to judge. I've been crying and my face is all puffy and just, just ignore my head. And now, from here down, who wouldn't want to come home to this? We are kicking ass as women. We are kicking ass as women of color as immigrants, and I think that's why we have to create our own platforms. That's it, my name is Jenny Yang, thank you so much. Have a great night.